Hey everyone, I'm Anne Marie from Hella Basque. Welcome to the Hella Basque YouTube channel where we are talking about the Basque country and Basque things all the time. Today's video is all about one of the most popular, one of the most cool Basque desserts the Basque burnt cheesecake. Now, first things first, is cheesecake a traditional Basque food? No, 100% not. But a couple of decades ago, there's one bar in Donostia, San Sebastian, one of the most beautiful cities in the Basque country. This bar called La Viña, the owner there, he decided he wanted to put a dessert on his menu and he decided on the cheesecake. And the way he makes his cheesecake is a bit innovative. It's very different from your New York cheesecake. It is very simple, just a few ingredients. If you wanna find out how it's made and what's in it, you can watch my last video where I attempted to make and I did succeed in making this delicious cheesecake that I'm gonna share with you guys today. Um, so he decided to make a cheesecake and it's a burnt cheesecake. So what's really cool about this is you can already see like this beautiful caramelized top going on. It's cased in parchment paper, it's baked in it, which is pretty cool. So you can see the burnt edges on the parchment paper. This paper was originally white before it went in the oven. The thing that I love most about this cake as like a super lazy cook, super lazy baker, I really appreciate that this cake, I don't know if you can see, but it does not have a crust. It's like the best parts of the cheesecake, the filling, and that's it. That's all it is, and it's delicious. So I'm gonna, clearly I already, I already had a slice. Um, you can watch me eat that in the last cheesecake video, but I'm gonna break off another slice and see how it tastes the day after I made it, because the cool thing about this cheesecake too is it's supposed to be really like jiggly. Like the cool thing about it is that it's like burnt and kind of caramelized on top, but the inside is a little more custardy. It's not as solid um, as a texture as your, your typical cheesecake would be. So let's see how this is gonna come out. Ah. Oh, it's because I got a piece of the parchment paper in there. That's not cool. Okay, all right, so can you see that? The, the middle is kind of falling apart there. It kind of caved in because it's super creamy. Um, so I made this cheese, oh yeah, I'm gonna get all that on the side. You know it. Uh, so I made this cheesecake and then I never had a Basque burnt cheesecake before. I've been to Donostia San Sebastian a few times. I've walked by La Viña, this bar that made this cake famous, uh, but I don't, I don't know why I never went and ate it. And now that I've tried this, like I regret it 100% um, because this is the best cheesecake I think I've ever had. So since I made this cheesecake, I did some research. Oh my gosh. Even the day after, it is so good. It is so good. It's supposed to be room temperature. I kept this in the fridge overnight. I wasn't really sure how to store it. Um, so I took it out a few hours ago. It's still a little chilled, but I can tell you it's delicious room temperature. It's delicious warm. It's delicious chilled. I have tried it in all phases and I'm a huge fan. So, oh, all those middle parts, like they just, they don't even melt in your mouth because they weren't even solid to begin with. They're just, it's just, mm, it's smooth. So I did research because I wasn't sure like how jiggly it was supposed to be. Um, and so I think this cheesecake that I've made actually like it could have been softer in the middle. I might have overcooked it because I'm weird about cheesecake. I thought I loved cheesecake. I thought I loved all cheesecakes without fail until I moved to England. If there's any British people watching, I apologize in advance, you might be offended by what I'm about to say. I lived in England for four years. Love the UK, big fan, the culture, the people, love it, okay? But I got a real problem with British desserts. And the first time I tried cheesecake in England, I was appalled. Like, 
I didn't know that you could make a cheesecake without baking it. I didn't know that people just mix some sugar in cream cheese, made a little crust, and put it in the refrigerator. Like, I'm like, I'm sorry, but I find that very uncivilized. Like, at that point, you're just eating sugary cheese. If you don't bake it, like, what makes it a cake? So, that's when I discovered that there's certain types of cheesecake, like a no-bake cheesecake. You could just put it in the fridge and take it out a few hours later and call it a cake. So I found that to be quite common in the UK and I was not a fan of that. I didn't realize how much I enjoy like a baked texture to a cheesecake uh, until I tried a no-bake cheesecake in England and I was not a fan. So with the proposition of making this Bass Burnt Cheesecake, wow, every bite, it doesn't get old. With the idea of making this cheesecake, I was a little uncertain if I would even like it. And maybe that's why I walked by Lavinia and never even went in because I saw the pictures on Instagram and like, it didn't really look appetizing to me because I'm not a big fan of like flan or custard or any sort of like, mm, like pudding type texture desserts. Like I love sugar, I love sweets, don't get me wrong, but I was a little iffy about this because I had some bad cheesecake experiences in the UK and after that I was like, New York cheesecake or nothing, like the rest is dead to me. So to have a Basque burnt cheesecake, I was unsure. So personally, I might have overcooked it with my personal bias uh, against soft cheesecakes. Um, but even if I, I, like it was still smooth, it was still really creamy in the middle there. And even here at the end, um, it looks really solid, but it's still very smooth. So if I did it wrong, I don't care. Like this is so good. Um, I'm very curious to try the original though. Let me know in the comments if you've made this before, um, how, how it came out for you. Did you cook it too much? Not enough? Because the recipe said it had to be like jiggly, which is really confusing because when you're baking a cake, like you know it's done when it's not jiggly anymore. So it was kind of a weird experience to like throw all that training out the window when making this cake. Um, but I think it worked out. And I'm. it might have overcooked on its own anyway because I think right after I took it out of the oven, I made the rookie mistake because I don't have a cooling rack. I should, but do I have a cooling rack? No. I made the rookie mistake of putting this whole pan of cheesecake on the stove top until I realized like, wait, that's probably not a good idea. Um, and then I moved it onto some like, like pot holders on the counter. Um, so it might have cooked on its own a little bit more afterwards, just being on the stove, like the heat from the oven rising. I don't know. Maybe it's a, all just an excuse, but I don't care. It's so good. Honestly, like this is my lunch right now. This slice of cheesecake, I'm not gonna need anything else because it is very rich. It may not be a dense cake. It's very smooth and gooey, but it uh, it's rich. You can feel it. I um. I watched some videos on YouTube of people eating for the camera and I discovered that this is like a whole trend on the internet, which kind of terrifies me. So if I was going to do this type of video, right, like I would sit here for an hour and attempt to eat like as much of this cheesecake as possible, which just the thought of it disgusts me. Like, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna do that for you guys today. I'm just gonna have my one slice and call it a day because also, not only do I not wanna get fat for this YouTube channel, like, it's not worth it. <laughs> I'm not gonna eat this whole cheesecake just for the views. But also, like, this cake is too good not to share. Like, I, I would be doing the world a disservice by keeping this cake to myself. So, as you can see, I've just, I've barely made a dent in this cake. So I'm gonna go this afternoon and drop off a bunch of different cheesecake packages with my friends and family because honestly, like the world needs to try this cake.
Oh my gosh, it was just so good. Like even towards the end, when it's supposed to be like a little, you know, more solid, it's still so smooth. And I really think it's cool if you can see on the side, like the dents from the creases and the parchment paper. That's kind of cool. I've never seen an imperfect looking cheesecake like this. So I'm gonna go share this with some people. And if you guys wanna make your own burnt bass cheesecake, highly recommend it. It's not complicated at all. It just requires you to like hunt down a ton of cream cheese. Um, at least the recipe I used. So I've linked in the description below um, the recipe that I used for this. And also it came from a cookbook. It's called La Vigna Cheesecake. I don't know if it's actually the original La Vigna Cheesecake recipe. I've read online that the owner of La Vigna is like really really generous about sharing his recipe. Like apparently it's not a secret the way it's made, but different chefs around the world have recreated it and like made their own versions. So um, it's in a cookbook by Marty Buckley called Basque Country. I've linked to that in the description below. It's all different Basque recipes and people have told me it's like a phenomenal cookbook. I haven't invested in it yet, but I think, uh, I think if this cheesecake is any indication of the other recipes in there, like it might be time. So, so I don't know if Marty Buckley actually used the Lavinia recipe or she just made her own, but either way, I'm a big fan of whatever this is because I can't stress, it was so easy to make. Like, you should make it, well, I was like, you should make it all the time, but probably not. I think also if you're not big on making cheesecakes, if you don't have a very well supplied kitchen like me, I, I'm horrible with having the right utensils and materials for these different baking projects and cooking projects I've been trying. Um, you definitely need a spring form pan for this because pretty much you put the parchment in the pan and then when it's done, the spring form pan is amazing because then you just like clip off the side and then you pull off the side. So right now, like this cheesecake is just sitting on the base of the pan. Um, so that makes it really easy to, to store, to serve, to cut it up like this. You don't really need to take it out of the pan because the spring form sides just like pop up on their own. So if you need to invest in a spring form pan for this recipe, highly recommend. I've got links for that in the description as well. If you need to figure out where to buy one, um, oh gosh, I'm sorry if this noise bothers you, but like, I've got to get every last bit of this cake. <sighs> Life is good, man. Life is good. So, today I learned that my negative no-bake cheesecake experience in England, I should not have let that taint my opinion of non-American cheesecakes because this right here made up for it. It's proven my bias wrong that non-American cheesecakes are terrible. I'm sure there's Americans who make no-bake cheesecakes too. Like, I don't want to throw too much shade at the British, but um, maybe just a little. Uh, but this right here, 10 out of 10, 20 out of 10, like, would recommend I will make this again. I'm not even gonna say I would make it again because I know I will. Like one day if we're allowed to have holiday parties again or birthdays or whatever, like I think this is gonna be my go-to cake because I mean, I think my opinion is really valid and I say that this is a crowd pleaser. Um, so I highly recommend if you're a fan of cheesecakes, like try out this recipe. Check out the links in the description. Like. You won't regret it. If you love cheesecake, like this is amazing. And if you're making it yourself, like I guess you can do like I did. You can kind of bake it more or less kind of depending how you like your cheesecake. But the whole concept of this cake is to keep the center very like oozy and jiggly and not set. So um, if you want to do it right, maybe cook it a little less than I did, but phenomenal cheesecake. Big fan, you guys all need to try it. If you've been to La Vina and you've had their cheesecake, like please let me know in the comments how that was. Is it overhyped 
or is it worth it because I'm very curious to try their original cheesecake now because this, whatever I just made right here, like this is not overhyped. This deserves all of the attention it gets online, on Instagram, like the food blogs. This is worth it. So thank you so much for watching and sharing this slice of cheesecake with me. If you wanna see more content about the Basque country and Basque culture, you can subscribe to the Hetla Basque YouTube channel. I'm posting about Basque topics here all the time. You can go back and watch the, the cheesecake making video that I did. That's linked in the description below if you really wanna see the process of how this all goes down. And uh, follow me on social media, at Hello Basque, if you wanna see more. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.